education secretary under President Ronald Reagan and host of The Wise Guys on Fox Nation. You're a busy man. Yeah. And the drugs are. Big and not rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, working on it. And working I'm going to be a wise guy tomorrow. Uh, yes, you are. Yes, you so are. I can't wait for that. Extend um, your work day. I'm it's... going to try. Uh, let's talk about Nancy Pelosi. She's got a message for her caucus. No impeachment. And hey, guys, if you want to be successful and you want to win, center left. Yeah. I'd like to have this recorded for posterity. Nancy Pelosi is right. She's right. On, no, she, she is, she she is, is exactly right. right. But can she hold back the tidal wave? All the energy in the party is on the left. Uh, and, and, of course, that's what the media is playing up, too. So she wants to do not an impeachment, but a kind of faux impeachment, a kind of imitation of impeachment. This is what an impeachment would start like, but we're not really going to do it. So she's trying to hold it together because she knows she can't get there this way. Well, she told The New York Times, we've got a quotation. If we win in 2020 by four seats, by a thousand votes each, he, the president, Trump, is not going to respect the election. He would poison the public mind. He would challenge each of the races. He would say, <clears throat> you can't seat these people. We had to win. Imagine if we, had, if we hadn't won. Oh, don't even imagine. So as we go forward, we have to have the same approach. So in other words, Speaker Pelosi is saying Donald Trump, the president, may not accept the results of the next election. He's really gotten into her head, hadn't he? I mean, you know, it, we, I'm worried about if we win, but not by enough, uh, what he'll say. You remember back in the election, they asked Donald Trump, you know, what happens if, uh, if you don't win? Would, right. you, would you concede? He said, well, I'll think about it. Well, the, the problem was right. Hillary had trouble conceding, still having trouble conceding. So. Before the election, she said she'd have no problem. That's right. That's right. Now we're to, uh, two years later with Hillary, two and a half yeah, years later. Yeah, glad you so. brought her up because she was speaking in California over the weekend. Yeah. And she's still not accepting the election results. Listen to this. I think it's also critical to understand that, as I've been telling candidates who have come to see me, you can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. Was the election stolen from her? You gotta know when to hold them, you gotta know when to fold them. You remember after World War II, they found that Japanese soldier about mm -hmm. 10 years afterwards in a yeah. cave? Yes. And when they found him, he started shooting, and they said, it's over. Right. You lost, you know? The Americans won, the Allies won. She really has to give this up. And, and you know, it's like, like watching a pitcher come back who's way past his prime. He should have retired, you know, should have settled it. But uh, she keeps coming. I guess right. the ticket sales are not what they should They're be. They're terrible. Uh, but by the way, credit to Al Gore. The, the, Al Gore had a heartbreaking loss, too. He disappeared. That's right. He's like, I lost. That's he, right. And they didn't say, well, the governor of Florida was Jeb Bush and George Bush. He says, I lost. Meanwhile, uh, there's other thing that really matters to you, and that's... Uh, Getting, getting rid of opioids, especially fentanyl, out there today. Are you for this crackdown on these pharmaceutical companies? Well, where they violated the law, for sure. Now, this latest one we've heard about, it. these guys were indicted for bribery. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a separate kind of crime. But were they pushing pills? They may well have been. And where they're doing that, they should, they should be investigated and convicted uh, if they committed a crime. What I am concerned about is the emphasis so much on these pharma companies, Oxycontin, Oxycodone. Yes, they can be dangerous. Yes, people have gotten addicted. But the nature of the problem has changed in the last two or three years. It's now fentanyl. It's now heroin. When I was up in New Hampshire, they told me, you know, $10 for a pill to get an Oxycontin. Two bucks to get heroin, right. three bucks to get fentanyl, uh, and that's the nature of the problem. You talk to law enforcement people, they will tell you they haven't seen a lot of that other stuff, the Oxycontin stuff on the street, but they're loaded uh, with these cases of uh, fentanyl. Most of the deaths uh, that come, come from those drugs. And where you see deaths from Oxycontin, Oxycodone, prescription drugs, is because of illegal diversion. Most people, the vast majority of people who are prescribed these, do not abuse them. Uh, and uh, did you notice the CDC had to come back and issue another kind of guidance saying a lot of people who need pain pills are not getting them. So I wouldn't whitewash these companies. You know, sure. where they're guilty, they're guilty. But get the problem right. And if you talk to law enforcement, they'll tell you the problem is fentanyl. And, and you know, the problem when you were drugs czar was crack. That's yeah. right. And it, That's just, right. Like, just like, okay, cocaine is 100 bucks or 200 bucks, but crack is $5. Yeah, that's right. And it was ravage, yeah. ravishing, ravaging an entire community. Uh, I was the first drug czar confirmed by Joe Biden, Chairman <laughs> Joe Biden, who, should I say this and hurt his chances, thought I was too soft on crime. But, <laughs> yeah, 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 sorry, Joe. Right. But uh, I, no, that's right. That was the problem. That's how we got into this. 
uh, and that's how the drug czar position was created. This one's worse. This one's much worse. 72,000 deaths. It's just so powerful. Horrible. Fentanyl. Horrible. Yeah, well, the, the Muslim American Society is investigating oversight after a <coughs> shocking video surfaces of these children speaking in a Philadelphia Islamic Center, and they're singing Chop Off Heads and Sacrifice Their Lives, all in the name of Allah. Watch this. That was in Philly. Uh, the organizer of that event has uh, been dismissed, and the organization says that it was an unintended mistake and an oversight. Really? Unintended mistake and oversight. Talk about an understatement. It was an atrocity. It was horrible. I think we watched it. We were all kind of reminded what we were thinking 10, 12 years ago when we were mm -hmm. seeing all these madrasas reports. It's horrible. And the entire Muslim community needs to speak out against this loud and clear. You had a guest on, um, a very good scholar, who says the Muslim community is offended by this because of all the good uh, natured and, and well uh, intentioned Muslims. That community needs to speak out and condemn this kind of thing in no uncertain terms. That is horrible, you know? What you teach the children matters. Uh, I would think so, considering that was, they weren't ad-libbing, uh, no. they were reading. And there were adults in the room. There were a lot of adults in the room. Uh, and so this thing had to be vetted by some number of adults. And as you said, not, uh, not Baghdad, right. not Tehran, this was Philadelphia. And it's, it's uh, so unbelievable. Here's what a statement from the Muslim American Society said. Not all songs were properly vetted. This was an unintended mistake and an oversight in which the center and the students are remorseful. MAS will conduct an internal investigation to ensure that it does not occur again. And it's the echoes that uh, statement of uh, some guys did something. Remember that? Congresswoman from, Omar. Uh, yeah, that's right. Understatement. It's just hard to believe understatement it's to say the least. I would love for you to hear from her now. Yeah. Well, that's, this would be a great opportunity for her. Be a great opportunity for her. All right, right. wise Thank guys, you. what's coming up? You said Brian's going to be on? Brian's going to be on, and you never know when Brian's going to be on. You don't need anybody on. else. But you I don't mean, need anybody else. Is, is, what do you mean there's other panelists? Yeah, right. I know. I know. I know. Well, I, I, well, I talked to one Fox News contributor who said, I only do solo. I said, oh, excuse me. <laughs> well, I'll get you. I will tell you who that is. We'll get you your own okay. show. We're going to have a great. We got Ari Fleischer. Uh, you and Ari, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be great. And we have Stuart Vardy. Stuart Apparently Vardy. there's some news on the economy. Right. I do Something. not like him at all. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. He's never welcome here. We're going to have a great show. <laughs> <laughs> if uh, you don't have Fox Nation yet, you should uh, go to foxnation.com to download. You know what? Perfect gift for Mother's Day. I forgot Lawrence Jones, who's probably going to steal the show. Absolutely. Right. He always does. Star. He always right. does. Yeah. Are you threatening Brian? Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Not unusual. Right. Extending Brian's work day. All right. Thanks, Thanks sir. sir.